Today we have the largest of the Evolution series here, the 9.25, or a lot of us call it the 9 and a quarter. But the question is, this Evolution mount is really only rated for 25 pounds, and this OTA is stretching just over 20 pounds with accessories. How good can it actually be? That's what we're here to find out. As always, thank you so much for joining me yet again for another Telescope Review. My name is Max, and welcome to my channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe. It helps me make more content for you going forward. Celestron made a name for themselves by creating the Nexstar SE mount about a decade and a half ago. This featured apertures up to 8 inches of SETs and Maxutov telescopes that you could put on these single arm fork mounts. But a couple of years ago, Celestron wanted to improve on that, and they wanted to create something with better motor drives, a better tripod for stability, and just increase the overall payload capacity from 12 pounds up to 25 pounds. So the double the capacity opens it up for a lot more different optical tubes. And so Celestron now offers a nine and a quarter variant, which is what we have here. Now this is just your standard Schmidt Cassegrain. It's 235 millimeters in aperture. That means it's 2,350 millimeters in focal length, giving you an F10. But commonly these Evolution mounts are bought with the eight inch. That's probably the most popular variant of the Evolution series is the eight inch. Now the Evolution has a lot of advantages over just the standard SE mount including an internal battery that will run several nights on a single charge. It charges in less than three hours for a full 0 to 100 charging. These even do decently performing even in low temperature conditions. Now the Evolution series improves by having a vastly larger motor drive. We now have two full reduction gears that are made of brass. The Evolution series improves greatly on the previous SE mount by giving a variety of new features, including these nice carrying handles located here on the base and on the other side here on the forearm. They're really nice for stability. Now this mount doesn't weigh a whole lot, but when you do lift it out in the dark, you have to center it up on the peg, either on the standard tripod that comes with the 6 inch and the 8 inch, or you get this massively larger CPC tripod for the 9 and a quarter only. That's the only way you can buy this setup. Now they did very smart engineering by engineering the same mounting points on the Evolution as they did the SE and the CPC. So all of them can be interchangeable with the tripods. Obviously the bigger the tripod, the more stable your rig is going to be. And I wouldn't recommend anything less than the CPC tripod, especially for the nine and a quarter. Other features include a little map light that we have inside the fork arm here. So you can lay your eyepieces in the tray right here inside where the handle is. And then that will allow you to illuminate your eyepieces at night so you can see them. It also includes Wi-Fi inside this fork arm. So when you have your telescope out at night, this will be glowing. You can connect it to your phone or your iPad or your Android tablet or phone and control everything from alignment to go to to tracking fine-tuning the object in the eyepiece everything can be done by Wi-Fi or you can of course just use the supplied Nexstar plus hand pad that allows you to also do all of those same functions if you just want a manual hand pad instead of the electronic some of the other features that includes over the SE mount is we do have clutches. You'll loosen this, your optical tube will swing forward and back. Same thing for the one on the base. If we loosen the one on the base, we can swing it back and forth this way as well, which is always a nice feature to have. Where the SE mount had no clutches, it was just where you stopped for the night is where you picked up the next day in terms of the optical tube spot. You can of course move the optical tube by hand, but you'll always risk damaging the gears doing that. So I wouldn't recommend that even on the SE. On this one, please unlock the clutches when you want to do something like that. This includes a larger Vixen style dovetail saddle that's capable of carrying just about any optical tube that'll support it. The nine and a quarter is well regarded as one of Celestron's crown jewels because there's something about this telescope and I can see why a lot of people like it. It does produce a flatter field natively than a standard SCT because it does have a little bit longer of an optical tube. They configured it to where the primary mirror gives 
a nice curvature, but the secondary mirror doesn't have to give as much of a curvature or as much magnification. So that lets you have a flatter field system when you do attach cameras back here. Now, the secondary is also capable of taking a hyperstar system. If you wanted to back it off and do F2 imaging with it, you can purchase a hyperstar from Star Arizona. That'll drop it down to 535 millimeters, down from its 2350 millimeters native at F10. So that's a huge, vast improvement for wide field and light capturing ability. This does feature the Starbright XLT coatings, which are Celestron's premium coatings on their optics that gives you pretty close to 90% transmission on all the optical surfaces for the night sky. Now this is not quite as good as something like a modern day refractor where you'll approach almost 99% of reflectivity of the stars to your eyepiece. The focuser on this is located on the bottom as well as a nice handle. So when you do slide the optical tube on and off, you can just grab the handle and kind of walk it off instead of having the risk of dropping it, which is always a positive. But the focuser is a little bit stiff, but it's very tactile. Very little image shift, I've noticed when I've been observing with this. This optical tube, Celestron says, weighs 20 pounds. Once you put your accessories on it, though, you're going to be closer to that 25-pound mark, which is the limit for this mount. On this mount, you will expect a few little issues with vibration. Because you are a single arm, this is nowhere near as stable, obviously, as a double fork arm. So you need to take that in mind when you're using this. Now, this setup is intended for visual only. You're going to have a few seconds of dampening, specifically at higher power. Because with it being one arm, when you touch that focuser, it is going to jiggle just a little bit. So when you have something really high power, like an eight millimeter eyepiece in here, Saturn is going to wobble a little bit. So it's going to be hard to sometimes get exact precise focus, but that could be alleviated if you want to buy the Celestron motor focus. You can plug it into the auxiliary port and run everything that way if you choose. These motors and everything can handle some astrophotography if you want to do the moon and planets or just simply put your DSLR on the back, but don't expect perfection and don't expect to put this on a wedge with as heavy of an optical tube as this is and get actually decent results because you're just not going to be able to achieve that. Now this telescope will allow you to get really close on the moon and planets, the brighter deep sky objects, split double stars, go searching for galaxies with some really dark skies. This telescope will get you very far. So this mount and telescope combination is actually one of the biggest telescopes out there for being as portable as it is. If you go to a nine and a quarter CPC, you're looking at about 50 pounds. If you go to the 11 inch CPC, you're looking at about 60 pounds. This whole thing packs down into 20 pounds, 15 pounds, another 25 pounds for the tripod. So each part and component is really lightweight and very easy to transport. I will say all in all, this nine and a quarter evolution is actually really surprising to me because I was originally, when these came out, I was on the fence. I was like, uh, there's no way that's going to be stable enough or even good enough to drive on those motors. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Speaking of motors, they are very, very noisy. sound like a coffee grinder, kind of like those Mead LX200 motors that we used to have and still have in today's market and on the star field when we go to star parties. But that's not to fret at all. This is a perfectly capable telescope and mount of showing you really nice, deep wonders of the night sky. I would recommend some vibration pads if you have some. I'd recommend keeping the tripod at a lower height if you can. But all in all, I would really recommend avoiding concrete. If you can set up on the grass, this is actually pretty stable and I've put a two inch eyepiece on it and it is actually perfectly acceptable for doing all types of observing and I've had it up to 300 and some power on Saturn and it absolutely tracks beautifully even sometimes better than the Nexstar GPS I've had sometimes even better than the AVX I've played with for a long time so in some ways it's actually kind of an all-around wonderful pick if you're looking for a big SCT that you can really haul to nice dark places and get really deep views. Or even if you want to dip into astrophotography, you can take this OTA off, mount it on a gem mount, and get yourself a nice rig going for deep space astrophotography. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Clear skies.